beautiful. We are live. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Maxa video podcast. I am thrilled to invite my amazing friend here. Hold on. Manol, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. It's my absolute pleasure. So uh, full transparency, guys, we, we were connecting for the last 10 minutes, making sure everything is going smoothly. And I'm just so excited to, um, to have you here today. Oh, I got a message. Hold on just a second. I want to make sure Facebook is connected as well. So let's do that. Beautiful. Go live. All right. This happened last time. Do you guys remember? Now I'm talking to the audience. Last week we had Parisa and the same thing happened. So we appreciate you guys being patient with us. Let's see. Go live. Meanwhile, Manol, you can tell us something really awesome about yourself. Oh, wow. Uh, the really awesome news about me is I'm moving to New York uh, <laughs> later this year. So I'm moving the family. I'm currently in Bulgaria, as you know, but we're moving to, uh, to New York City. So this is probably the most exciting uh, thing uh, that's going to happen for, for us this year. But other than that, I'm glad to be on the podcast. Uh, I'd love to, you know, just bring some value to your audience. Thank um, you. And it's fixed. We are on Facebook, too. We are, uh, okay. A lot of our friends like, love to watch us on YouTube, but... I wanted us to be live on Facebook just in case. All right. So thank you, everyone, for joining. I love and appreciate you. If you are listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Apple, that's awesome. Enjoy your drive to work or your workout while you listen to us. But when you have a moment, you have to watch this again on YouTube or Facebook because Manol has the best presentation ready for us. But before we go into the presentation, I would love if you can take five minutes, Manol, to talk about yourself instead of me doing an intro and, uh, and sharing the highlights that I think are important. I would love, and, and don't be humble, please. I would, love for <laughs> you, I would love for you to share the awesome accomplishments. So if you can tell us a bit about yourself, that would be fabulous. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Mano Georgiev. I'm the founder um, of a uh, performance ad agency called Captivate. And uh, we uh, focus on uh, customer acquisition for e-commerce direct-to-consumer brands uh, on paid social, mainly Facebook and Instagram acquisition marketing. And we've managed over $450 million in ad spend for um, e-commerce brands in the past five, six years. Uh, so speaking about like high volume in spend and acquisition revenue uh, driven to e-commerce, that's our bread and butter. And um, what else? I'm currently in Bulgaria. Uh, this is my home country. This is where my wife and I um, met and we were born. Uh, we live in the States, but for the past three years, we've been here because of the pandemic. And now we're moving back. We're going back to uh, New York. So I'm excited about that, as I said earlier. <laughs> I, love that. Uh, I mean, I actually was born in Romania, but I moved to the US when I was 19. And that makes me more Americanized than I want to admit. But, you know, Europe, it just has, you know, I think yeah. once, once you're born here, you just have that European, uh, you know, whole vibe that no one can take away from you. So uh, when, I, when I, I met you, I, I knew right away. I was like, OK, where are you from? Bulgaria. <laughs> that makes well, sense. <laughs> very close, very close to where you at. Absolutely. Tell us a bit about your uh, work accomplishments, because you make the advertisers that you work with a lot of profit. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we have a portfolio of clients that's uh, very diverse. So um, for the e-commerce parts, uh, for the e-commerce part, some of our, uh, you know, big clients have been uh, Blue Apron, Sun Basket, uh, Spartan Race, Mirror Safety. Um, hooked on phonics. These are kind of like household names that most Americans would know, uh, probably not so much in Europe. Um, but for these companies, you know, we're talking about like millions in managed spend on Facebook per month. Um, and, uh, you know, just big accomplishments uh, would be, uh, you know, just scaling a brand from uh, probably like 15K a month in uh, spend to like a couple million a month in spend. So these are pretty big, huge, you know, flagship uh, yeah. brands that 
and achievements that um, are in our portfolio. Um, one interesting thing is in, uh, from the name Captivate, we started as a user acquisition company for mobile um, apps and mobile games. So we would run user acquisition campaigns for these games. So that's, you know, that's not e-commerce. <clears throat> and then some of these uh, companies that we worked with are Glue Mobile, Nickelodeon, Mobility Wear, you know, the first solitaire app in the app store. And then we transitioned and started working with e-commerce and that picked up in the, in the last um, four years. So now majority of our portfolio of clients are e-commerce. But we did start with mobile apps. I used to have my own mobile apps in the app store. Um, so that's a, that's a long story. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been running Facebook ads probably for the last 10 years. Prior to that, the history is I had... Um, you know, uh, dating websites. This is how I started with the online businesses. And then I was advertising those on Google. But then, um, you know, Google made some changes that our traffic died overnight, like 95% wow. of the traffic was lost. And then I had to quickly adapt to something new. And that, that's when I started learning Facebook. That's the times when there were even books, like three or four books total on Amazon about Facebook ads. Wow. That's you can imagine how far back that is because now nobody's going to buy a book on Facebook. They change everything changes in weeks. It doesn't add up because you're so young. I mean, you started doing this when you were two years old. The math just doesn't add up because you're too young. <laughs> it does uh, add up. Lettering, I'm, lettering get, gets me everywhere. It's just you know how how things go. Sorry, say again. I said, I said, flattery uh, takes us everywhere, right? Yeah, yes, flattery Thank takes us know. everywhere. I appreciate that. Uh, I wish I was that young, but not anymore. <laughs> so, you know, would you be comfortable starting your presentation? Because yes, yes. I would love to show everyone what you have uh, <clears throat> for us. Yeah. So, assuming everybody, um, I mean, the audience of Max Web, um, let me just share a screen entire screen and you let me know when you see it i see it beautiful and i brought it on the screen here for us awesome so um based on my research on your audience and knowing you uh knowing the people around you um i feel like they're pretty uh, up to speed with creating a strong offer and sales page and a product that converts because that's the whole you know story about affiliates right having a strong offer so um I decided to uh, put uh, together a presentation on how you can scale an offer uh, from just being an offer or a single product and nothing else to it to like an entire brand and then scale that entirely on Facebook with Facebook ads. Uh, and I'll throw in uh, and use that based on a few case studies um, for a brand that we scaled on Facebook, you know, from zero to 30 million a year in revenue and a um, few more other brands but uh, that would be the presentation on so anyone who is interested in um, you know um, expanding uh, their revenue channels outside of affiliates uh, and going into paid social that would be super valuable for them absolutely and you know that's that's what we always you know try to do even for us internally like when we create offers we you know we have our affiliates but we also always try to test different sources and facebook has always been good to us so i am excited i'm going to take lots of notes here cool i'll start going through it so that's yeah. uh, that's one of the founders matt and the product uh, sorry the brand is called life boost coffee so they sell uh, this healthy organic coffee online. It's pretty much, uh, you know, one, uh, it's, it's coffee. So it's one product. Uh, they started with uh, just that. And you can see here, Matt's holding his phone with uh, his Shopify revenue, but that was scaled entirely on Facebook. When they started, it was uh, nothing to, you know, now being at five, 600 K in ad spend on Facebook and uh, north of 2.5, 2.6 million in revenue. They hit the Inc. 500 list uh, two years in a row, you know, 21, 22, to being the fastest growing uh, e-commerce coffee company in, in the States. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the case studies. The other one is actually I can just show the entire screen. That's 
better is Cook's Venture. So I'll give you another um, example with another client of ours. They sell organic uh, pasture-raised you know, chicken and meat delivered directly to your door. So um, for them, when we started, uh, when we took over their um, you know, acquisition marketing on Facebook, they were uh, spending around 60K a month uh, without being profitable on that. Like $100 was their uh, cost per customer acquisition. And then as you can see, we um, right here, we uh, come on board and we drop the cost per purchase uh, in half to from 100 to 50. And we double their uh, ad spend um, you know, month over month to the point where we scale them so fast that um, you will laugh at this one, but we scale them so fast to the point they run out of chicken. So, <laughs> so they have to, we had to no scale problem. back. <laughs> Good problems to have to run out of chicken. We had to scale back and uh, wait for them to replenish inventory. But yeah, that's uh, the hockey stick here for them as well. So good case study. And then uh, that's a recent uh, case study, another brand, Mirror Safety. So what they sell is um, these premium self-protective gear. And um, they exploded when we started, you know, um, applying our system and our strategies for their Facebook marketing. So we scaled them from 3K in daily spends to 50K uh, uh, in daily ad spend just on Facebook. And in 45 days um, after we started scaling them, we reached 88 million people on Facebook alone. So when we talk wow. about, you know, just the scalability on, um, uh, of a platform, Facebook is still the uh, only platform um, that I feel is the strongest where you want to, if you want to achieve massive scale in a short time, Facebook is the place. Um, you know, there's YouTube, there's um, native as well. But when we talk about viral, massive scale, uh, and efficient scale, it's still Facebook. And this is, you know, this is what we've been focused on. We're exploring other channels, but we're specifically, you know, the masters of Facebook advertising. And we don't really want to get, um, you know, distracted with uh, being experts at too many um, uh, marketing channels. So this is for mirror safety. You see here the massive scale. This is scaling them uh, this February from you know, 6K, then we up the spend to 14K, then 30K the next day. This is just day over day, not months. This is days. And then 50K. So it looks fantastic. So, so yeah, so this is pretty massive. And it's, it's, it's all in the strategies that I'll show here uh, to your audience. So um, let me just dive into it. I've already talked about myself, uh, but here it is again. This is um, the name of our agency, Captivate. Um, you know, we are really big, um, our, you know, bread and butter is really, uh, at creative, uh, production and tests because creative now is the main driver of performance on, on Facebook and basically on paid social. But we, you know, we made that shift in our strategy, um, a few years ago, like probably like three, three and a half years ago when, people really weren't talking at all about creative when it comes to Facebook advertising. It was all about tactics and bidding and budgeting and uh, these type of things and targeting. So that's when we realized Facebook is going towards automation and simplification of their uh, algorithms. So they were taking away all of the manual work of uh, the media buyer. Uh, but one thing they cannot automate, automate and take full control of is the creative. Because Facebook, they don't know what kind of video you're going to put there. They don't know what kind of ad copy you're going to put there. Maybe one day they'll be able to predict all these things. Um, but creative really is the main driver. Um, okay, so me on stage, a few, uh, few shots here just uh, showing, you know, you know, that I enjoy teaching off stage and meeting great people like you, Anna, uh, on these uh, conferences we met uh, recently uh, in December. Yeah. 
valuable and and i always touch base on this it's they're so valuable because obviously you can connect with everyone online right but it's just a whole different vibe when you can meet people in person and as a small parenthesis guys even if you're just getting started you would be surprised how excited everyone gets to share what they do and what they're good at and you know how manol said he loves to teach off stage as well most of us do i'm such a nerd i love it when people come to me and ask me questions i'm like honored that you guys would <laughs> want to hear what i have to say so if you have any goals for this year one of them should definitely be to do more conferences um even if you're an affiliate or a product owner uh there's so much value in conferences yeah 100 percent um and then um off stage and uh, also on the table is where I enjoy teaching <laughs> Facebook ads. But you see, this is one smaller conference where like a bunch of people are around me and I'm showing them some hacks. I don't even remember what that was about like in 2013, but a long time <laughs> ago. So you can see 10 years ago. Um, anyways, let's get right into it. You guys are busy. So um, how to scale your offer from zero to 30 million a year? Entirely with Facebook ads. Before I dive into one, two, three, I'll show you something else. But here's the story. It's pretty simple. You need a high converting sales funnel and you need that to increase your conversion rate and sales, obviously. Um, then you need to have an irresistible offer. And I'll talk about increasing AOV um, and being more competitive with your CPAs uh, uh, for Facebook so you can outspend the competitors and actually set up the table for massive uh, scale. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth um, proceeding to testing on Facebook before having these two. And then three is you need a you know, killer strategy when it comes to performance ad creatives, because as I said, that's what drives performance on Facebook. Uh, that's to further suppress your cost per uh, purchase or cost per customer acquisition, and you can massively scale. Now, I just want to point something out that has been valuable to I think I hear an echo or something. Okay, now it stopped. Um, this here has been valuable um, when I've been doing a similar presentation. And these 12 point check, these, this list of 12 um, point uh, you know, items here uh, for picking the right product to scale on Facebook have been uh, valued by the audience. And so what this is, Anna, is, you know, if you have a product and you're not sure, or you have multiple products and you're not sure how to pick the right product to start running ads um, on Facebook, let's say you have a Shopify store or let's say you have 10 offers, you don't know which one to start with. You don't want to start with all at the same time. I mean, you can strategize a little bit before you burn through a lot of money testing them. But here's the, the list. First, profit margin. Uh, can you sell multiple units at once? For example, with coffee, yes, you can. Like you can sell three, five bags at a time. No need to be one, right? AOV, you need to watch that. Facebook now, ads are expensive, so you need to be north of $70 AOV for sure. Um, then watch the weight of the product because that will increase your margins if it's uh, or decrease your margins. Um, is it a consumable? Because then you can charge for subscriptions. That's really big. Um, what's the return rate? Um, could it be a subscription? Uh, what is this? Uh, the number eight delivers quick uh, results. So that means um, if it solves an issue, I think with most affiliate offers, they do solve an issue like weight loss, stomach pain, whatever it is, joint pain. That's if, if it can be tested and delivers the result fast, that's better. So I'll give you an example with that when we go through the list. Mm -hmm. market size that would be can you is it a small niche or it's pretty scalable into the broader market um does it solve a specific issue better offer than um do you have a better offer on your website than an offer that you're probably running on amazon because if your offer if your amazon offer beats your shopify offer or store offer then that's not really good because people tend to go to amazon to check if that product exists there and if you have the same product and a better offer on Amazon, they will most probably be buying not off Facebook and Shopify, but they will be purchasing on Amazon. You don't want to do that. All right. So here's some examples. What's not the ultimate, you know, product for Facebook would be 
something like this baby stroller. Why? Because first, too large, too bulky to ship high. Uh, it has also very long consideration cycle between the time you see an ad and the time mm. you buy it. Because people would be researching, oh, maybe I need, they're buying something that requires some consideration. It's not an impulse buy like a t-shirt or coffee um, or a cream or something that's uh, really a no-brainer. I can spend like 50 bucks on it. Well, this is like six, $700. So um, it doesn't really qualify on a bunch of these criteria here. Also, it's not a subscription. They will buy it once. They will not come back, back and buy again. Um, then something like this um, diffuser. For instance, this one, most people were, were going to buy one and that's it. They're not going to buy two or three or five at a time. And you can't really... Uh, put it on a recurring um, out of ship uh, basis, right? It's not a consumable unless you sell essential oils with it. But as a standalone product, that's not the best for Facebook. Now that really starts to qualify because that's a meal replacement. <clears throat> They're really good brand, by the way, Kachava. Um, good profit margin, good AOV. Um, then is it a consumable? It is. Can you make it a subscription? Of course, because, you know, you can just uh, ask people to subscribe. They try it once, then you retarget them again. And then if they liked the product, they can, um, they can uh, subscribe and that increases your LTV. Then coffee, same thing. It, che it, it checks all these um, uh, points here. The other thing with when I said, like, does it uh, deliver fast result is this. If, you, uh, if, you, if the problem you're solving is stomach pain from drinking uh, acidic coffee, right? So you sell them a low acid coffee like this one. And then what happens is people can drink it. And then within a you know, few days, they know that, yeah, I don't have a stomach pain from this coffee. So now when they see your ads again on Facebook, they will immediately go there and comment, yeah, this is great. It's... Um, it delivers um, to its promise, right? Lives up to its promise. They said it's not going to give me heartburn. It's not giving me heartburn. So it, it, it's immediate. Where if it's joint pain or if it's something that requires more time, you don't have that momentum to gain this social proof on Facebook with your ads. That's the one thing that we've seen really works well is with when you can test something immediately, then you see the ads on Facebook that retarget you so you become, as a customer, uh, social proof and a lever to increase conversion rates and validate that the product actually is working. Same thing with baby drops. You see, that's another product that's, uh, that's for Facebook. It's light and it checks all these check marks and then it can deliver immediate results and you can put it on a subscription too or sell multiple at the same time. I love the examples. It's so helpful. Yeah, um, I'm glad and I, I hope it, it um, also, I, I can send uh, that presentation later. So if someone's asking, you can, um, yes, uh, please. They can get the list. Sure. Okay, so let's go through the one, two, three and start with the uh, high converting sales funnel. Um, so if you think about it, when you start running ads, you have to pick a page, you know, where do you, where do you uh, send the traffic from Facebook? And um most brands that I see, like people who are starting off themselves with Facebook is they, they have a Shopify store, they have product, and then they start running, start running ads directly to the Shopify uh, page, like that, which looks something like this, right? And some are, you know, prettier, but some are much worse than what you're seeing here, because I've seen it all. Um, so what I'm saying is, this is not the best place where you want to direct the traffic. And as you affiliates know uh, best out of everybody, you need you know, a standalone long form sales page and a funnel. If it's a VSL, that also works. Um, what we found works best is these long form sales pages because what you want is you want to be more competitive with your conversion rate um, on Facebook. So if you send traffic to directly to Shopify, you would be seeing something between one and 3%, three percent, three be, being, you know, on the high end um, in terms of, you know, click to purchase conversion rate. But if you have 
long form sales page that's direct response, like well written copy, that could be increasing the conversion rate, you know, anywhere from, you know, uh, five to nine percent, which is making a huge difference when it comes to uh, running ads and start, you know, increasing your spend. So let's see if I can zoom in on that. But um, this is what the page looks like. So you, I can break it down uh, that I feel might be very interesting because this is not the prettiest page, but it converts very well. And this is for um, that coffee brand I'm talking about here. Um, as you can see, we start with headline and story on top. So this is the headline has to be very um, strong headline uh, focused on the benefit, focused on the solution. Then it goes through, you know, just a collage of social proof images, people posing with it. Um, if you can have an authority figure, that would be uh, good. If you don't, that's okay. Like we have a doctor here. He's one of the founders actually. And then you move on to, let's see, what is this? This is more benefits. So you see here, that's social proof. Um, and then you start drilling down a list of benefits and features about the product. Like for example, this coffee is mycotoxin free. So it means it has no toxins in it. It's single orange, it's shade, shade grown, uh, pure coffee. Then you continue with these, like more doesn't mean um, bad, right? So more benefits here. And then we go into the social proof, which is the more, like, here's the deal. Um, you don't have to make it pretty. And this page is definitely not pretty, but it converts like crazy. And that's the thing about Facebook. Like people keep assuming and trying to polish things and make them perfect. But the thing is you have to move fast, mm -hmm. test it when it's ugly. If you can sell it when it's ugly, then imagine what you can do when you polish it up. So Amen. we have tested the hell out of this page with more modern, more simplistic, um, more, you know, better designs. But the old, you know, old school, I don't want to say ugly, but, you know, it's just not the best looking sales page you've seen. It's just crushing everything else. Now you tell me about the psychology of, of people, but that's what it is. Yeah. And, then, and then you have more social proof. So the secret is you have to pack it with social proof. And you see here they have uh, these reviews, like a screenshot. So that's one piece of uh, social proof. Um, then you have the offer, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And the offer is the most important thing, but then you have more social proof in a different form. So if you, if you can just redesign all these customer testimonials and reviews have into a different, you know, look and uh, style, then when people start scrolling through the page, they just see, you know, they don't read through all of these, but they see like, oh, these guys are everywhere. They have, you know subconsciously they think like they're seeing different uh look and feel of social proof and then they just get uh they just get the idea that you know these guys are legit they've been everywhere they have ugly testimonials they have good looking testimonials so this probably is working so that's uh, a little trick that you know people can use when they design sales pages more it, it works yeah <laughs> Personal story, so there's, that's another social proof element. And then look at this. You just, you know, put screenshots of different, um, you know, magazines. From, I mean, this is uh, where they were endorsed. This is from Instagram. And, and that's it. So helpful. Yeah. So, so that's the story here. That's why we need a sales page like that. We do use, you know, some templates. We know what works. Uh, let me just uh, enlarge that. Um, but here's another one. So if this is another client, uh, Red Remedies uh, selling supplements. Uh, so if you if they would want to sell that, even if it's nine dollars, like nowadays we pay, you know, the CPC on Facebook is so high yes. that you you can't be selling like nine dollar product. You have to bundle it somehow to make yep. sure your AOV goes up, and then. Uh, again, we create these sales pages and funnels where we increase the conversion rate and the AOV. Uh, so that's the same story here. I'm not going to go through details on this one. But 
before I move into the offer, which is step two, do you have any questions, Anna, on the funnel, on the sales page? No, no, no. But it's so helpful because um, a lot of the, you know, what you've been sharing with our audience, it applies to native. So I've been mm -hmm. uh, shaking my head a lot because, you know, even using the authority figures, having the testimonials, the benefits, that's the same idea when you create a good pre-sale for native. And... Um, you know how you said you, sometimes an uglier page will convert. Yeah. That's 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 true. I mean, you guys, it's so important to not go with what you like and what you think is going to be pretty. You just have to test because what converts, you would be surprised, is rarely what we overall think is hot or cool. So thank you for the examples. And I'm so glad you are comfortable sharing the presentation because I know a lot of people are going to want to have uh, the information. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that's it. And then we move on to the offer um, where that's your bread and butter here. But I yeah. guess it's, it has to be everybody's because... Without an offer, there's like nothing can be achieved. Um, yeah. But a lot of the uh, e-commerce, you know, let's say Shopify owners uh, and brand owners, they don't really understand the offer side of it, where affiliates, they yeah. really understand it. Yeah. Um, same thing with Amazon sellers. Mm -hmm. And we have to, you know, bridge that gap between that knowledge like they they feel like oh we have the brand we have the shopify store uh it's great um but they don't have a good offer and the offer can make uh it's a day and night like you know they're doing great with just uh their shopify products but then once we turn it into a page with a specific offer that's clear um and it increases the conversion rate by 50 percent Wow, then they can spend 10x than what they are and they can just believe it. I am so glad that you shared that because we have to say no to product owners that come to us all the time because they do have the Shopify or Amazon pages. And it's really hard to explain that if they don't convert, everyone is going to be losing money. So we actually started creating offers ourselves because traffic used to be our superpower. And we started creating offers because it was frustrating not to have really good converting offers once you know the traffic side. So it's, uh, it's so important. And I'm so glad that you agree. Yeah, absolutely. So here's an example. Um, and then it's, it's not a science. I mean, there's a system, there's few strategies behind it because it's just end of the day products and making sure like you know how to sell them. Uh, but but uh, here's the product page. You know, the AOV could be $30 here if they, you know, just decide to buy uh, three at a time. But then when you bundle it together like this, um, and then you can get an AOV to like $100. Now you're competitive. Now you can spend like $30, $40, 50 $60 to acquire a customer where you can't really be spending that much if your AOV is 30 bucks. So that's why it's so important to have. Like, for example, here, they're packing them into two and four packs. Um, the difference is like there's more pills uh, into each of these, you know, bottles here. That's why the price... Is, yeah. is higher, but then you also have to give them like super high discount. Um, some brands, they don't like that. They don't want to discount the value of the brand too much. Um, but I'm just telling you what works. And, yeah. um, you know, 40%, 50%, 60% I've seen work the best because you just give that to like first time customers and they're urged to buy it because otherwise they would have to be buying a full price. Um, there's another one where instead of selling more units at a time, you just bundle a bunch of different products together. I still hear that echo a little bit, by the way, Anna. Uh, not sure. I, I think it's when I unmute myself. So that's why I kept uh, muting and unmuting myself. Uh, okay. When you speak, yeah. I'll just mute myself. And guys, if you need anything, I'm here. Just drop a comment. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, now it's disappeared. So yeah, you bundle them or you just, uh, one easy way is let's say you have coffee. You can just buy more of the same product because you can't, if you don't have any other products, you can't really create a bundle. Right. Um, so that was the case here with, um, with this brand with life boost. So, um, in the beginning on the offer, and I'll tell you, that's another funny story. 
is, you know, you see, this is the offer. You buy three or you buy six. If you look at the, if you look at the discount, it's actually the same. You're getting 50% off on, on both. And we've tested the hell out of this. We've did different number of bags, different percentage of discount, um, you know, just different uh, variations. Like here you see two options, but we added like a third or we added a fourth or it was just one. So, so many variables we, we've tested, but the three and six seem to beat and perform and outperform everything. And then we even have the same exact uh, discount whether you buy three or six, you know? So, which is really strange, right? Like the logic would be like, oh, you have to give more discount if they buy six, but less discount if they buy three. Well, we've tested it. And then obviously it's, it's not that way. So, so you have to test. As Anna said, like everything needs to be tested. So check this one, um, how we increase the AOV. You see, this is three and six. When they started, they had single bag of coffee, which makes more sense. For a product like that, you wouldn't be buying six bags at a time um, from uh, you know, a product you don't know about. Like at least coffee is something you would want to taste first, see if you like it, and then buy more, buy three or six bags. But the one bag was what was hurting the AOV because everybody would go for the single bag, which was $34, you know, full price. And nobody would want to risk buying three or six at a time. So I told the guys in the beginning when we started, I told them, like, remove the single option. They're like, don't sell them single unit back. Only three or six. They're like, but who, who, the, who, who is going to buy three or six at a time? Um, I told them, like, leave that to me. Because as soon as you remove the single bag, that means your AOV will double. Because the minimum they can spend on the site will be $52. And now they would, some percentage of them will buy six and then the AOV will go up. So that's exactly what happened. Look here in this pink um, period where like not pink period, but like where I had it marked in uh, pink. This is when they were running ads and then look at the AOV was you know, $34. That, that's what it was. And then when we removed the single bag from the page and we left only three and six, Look what happened with the AOV, the third one here, is it, it, it doubles from 35, it goes to 60, okay? And it keeps climbing up. And then now look at the spend, the spend which is the left one here. That's not that spend, that's not revenue, the first uh, column here. This is by month, right? So this is monthly spend. Started with like they were spending very little to when we did that change, we started scaling them, went to like 40, um, 48,000. And then in a single month, we just doubled the spend from, for, from 50K to 100K, from 100K the next month to 167K. Then a couple of months later, 250,000. A couple of months later, 433,000 in a single month. So how is this, how is this actually happening which will be the next question how do we spend you know 50k and then next month we decide to spend 100k what drives that scale because as you can see the ROAS remains the same and then AOV remains the same cost per purchase remains the same but spend goes up usually on Facebook the more you spend the higher uh, your CPA you know the cost per purchase that's how it works um, so the, these wins here uh, in terms of spend increase come from creatives because we're testing um, and we have a killer creative strategy for these e-commerce brands that, you know, you, we keep testing very aggressively and we come up with these creative wins that allow us to massively scale them and just take the business to the next level. And then a few months later, we come up with another one and we keep growing and growing the brand. So this is very indicative of this whole situation. And I'm going to talk about the creative, like on um, moving on, like on number three. Any questions so far? You Anna? really are a good teacher. I shouldn't have doubted you. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. I never, no, but it's fantastic. Thank you. No, no questions, but okay. I'm learning a lot. So thank you. Awesome. So performance creatives, this is where uh, the magic starts, right? Like, because everything else is, you know, you can have that offer in that funnel, 
Um, you can start searching for affiliates or do different things. But me, I want to be in control of when I start spending um, on Facebook. I can double it, triple it, then exit, or I can scale back. I'm in control. I can do it every single second. You know that. You know, just just this control over um, you know the growth is what I like. Um, I've never been into influencer marketing and these type of things because you can't predict them. They're really like in someone else's hands and you have to pray that something happens and then it's up and down. But if you crack the code on how you can scale on a massive platform like Facebook and it's in, within your control, then you can sleep much better at night. At least that's, that's how I feel about it. So, uh, guys, what we do, uh, one of the, the strategies is I call it creative hacking. And here, really, the goal is to find winning creatives that are scalable. Winning creatives <clears throat> scalable um, means, like, for instance, here for this brand, we are spending 10K a day. You see how it's flat here at 10,000. And then we find this creative win. Within just a few days, we can double the spend. Same thing with that other brand I showed you earlier where we increase the spend within a few days from 3K to 50K a day. Usually when you do that at high velocity, um, at such high velocity, you know, spend increase, that will break performance, you know, because uh, CPAs will start um, declining. So uh, this is what the creative can achieve. Nothing else can achieve such scale than a creative win. You can't really achieve that with like a targeting strategy or bidding strategy. These are things of the past, you know, tactics of the past. But a creative win can, you know, just 5x your uh, ROAS or reduce your CPA in half uh, or dramatically to the point where now you have something uh, strong and you can pour, you know, gasoline on the fire and you can scale it within days. This is what I love about Facebook, like discovering these wins. And you can see the revenue here from uh, 20K goes up to 35K within like one day. And then you can see like the levels here. Now we're leveling the brand. Now they're on level, you know, 2X than what they were the previous month. And then we remain and we, we stay on that level. It's not like it's for a few days and then it drops. It just stays there. And then layer over layer, month over month, um, or quarter over quarter, we just keep increasing them. So that's the beauty of it. So similar thing here from 3K to 38K um, in spend. And I'll show you more later, but I just want to go into the, the strategies and what works. So what makes a creative um, winner? 70% will be the video and the image because this here is the whole right ad. And then you have the visual, which is the video and the image. On top, you have the ad copy. Headline is at the bottom. From like millions and millions in tests uh, that we've done on Facebook, the win will come from the visual. So for this brand here, Life Boost, I'll give you just some um, statistics so you can put it in perspective for yourself. 17 million in ad spend. 95% of the ad spend runs the same exact ad copy. But we've tested over 3,000 different creatives and videos for it. So one ad copy to 3,000 uh, you know, images and videos. So that tells you that the wins and the growth comes from the visual, from the image. and from the. So the ad copy is very important, of course. If it's bad ad copy that really doesn't have a story and who can, uh, you know, you know the drill there with all that uh, strategy, um, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be performing, uh, you know, op uh, on optimal levels. But really what drives it is the video and the image. And then the headline, the description, these are things that, you know, move the needle by, you know, very small percentage, like 5 to 10%. So you always want to test them, but you have to start with the visual. Um, and then when, if we focus only on the centerpiece here, which is the video and the image, uh, when you start testing creatives, 80% um, of the creative wins um, are from testing different concepts. So complete different look and feel type of creative. So it could be video, could be image, could be short video. It could be like, you know, short five second mesmerizing video. The other one could be, you know, long story video where it has more of a story to it. 
But the more concepts you test and a variety, um, then your chances of hitting like something that will completely move the needle in terms of performance are higher. If you just make little tweaks to your creatives, you're not going to move the needle that much because little changes means small variances in performance, either up and down, up and down. So variations um, would move the needle like probably less than 20, 20%. So here's what's uh, happening on, on um, Facebook. And these are some industry uh, numbers. But 95% of all the creatives you test on Facebook will fail. So that's pretty you know, high percentage, right? Like that means one of 20 will, will uh, one of 20 could be you know, the new control, the new winner. Uh, but it could be even worse than that, right? So when you keep testing, you create a lot of wasteful spend. That's the problem that everybody faces and then they get discouraged on running ads on Facebook. They're like, oh, we tested 20 different things. Nothing worked. Facebook doesn't work for our product. Well, it's not really true because um, they're, they're doing it wrong. Um, but to really find these winners here, like for example, you see this brand, they're running a bunch of ads. There is a way for you to reduce that, that failure rate here like the 95%, and increase the success rate. So what we do is um, you need to find wi winners quickly um, and you need to minimize the wasteful spend. So you go to the ad library, which and I assume you know, everybody here knows about, um, Facebook slash ads library. And then what you do there is you can reverse engineer what are the winners of your competitors. First, you need to make a little list of competitors um, or brands that, and products that are similar to yours. Then you go there and then you start uh, browsing through the ad library. And what you do in the ad library is you want to find and you want to reverse engineer these winners they have. Then you want to model after their winners and then you launch only potential winners and test only potential winners. Like you don't want to reinvent the wheel. This is kind of like, you know, uh, sp spy still and deploy type of strategy. But it works very well if you want to move fast, if you want to validate a product and scalability of a product on Facebook and offer fast. So here, for example, you go through the ad library and you see all of that. You immediately uh, can, can, not, can notice that there's some pattern here. There, there's, you know, pretty young, you know, uh, girl holding a little bag. That's a weird thing, right? Like that's a little discovery they made with like, they, they zoomed out this, this uh, bag of tea. They made it so small. But anyways, that's not the biggest discovery. It's like, look, everybody is on the left side. They hold it in front of the camera like this. They're smiling. These are all commonalities and things they have in common. They're using the yellow color a lot, the bog of 50% off. So all of these things, that's the concept. It's six, there, and at the, at the same time, you see like different variations of the same thing. That means one thing, they discover the winner and now they're testing variations, but first they got to the winner. Now you reverse engineer, uh, you reverse engineered one, one winner, potential winner you can test for your product. So this is, this is really like the creative, uh, hacking thing. So here's another one here. Uh, same thing. They figure out that when they show um, these videos that super, look super casual of someone, you know, staring the, the iced tea um, work, now they start testing variations of them. And you see like they zoom the camera so close to uh, the cup as if it makes you thirsty, right? When you sip from this cup, that's what you see. That's the same exact thing. So this is these are all angles. Like it's not like you're gonna shoot the cup from a distance, or you're gonna make the perfect angle, or you're gonna try to make it perfect. First is imperfect. Second, there it's all square videos. Third, it's like you know probably five seconds each. Um, they're putting some fruit and they're staring. Like you have to model after this, and then that's another potential winner you can test. And when you test twenty of these, that most probably work for your competitors. Your, your failure uh, of finding a winner on, on uh, Facebook is not going to be 95%. I guarantee it. 
All right, I'm gonna keep moving. So with Yeti is the same thing, but I'm not gonna repeat myself because it's it's pretty much the same story. Even Yeti, like you can you can see that they're doing that same uh, testing strategy. You see, all of these are the same, just unpacking and packing some items into um, into a cooler, and they have the same background of the images, same overhead uh, camera shoot, so. All these things you can take into account when, when you do creative uh, strategy. And that's a favorite quote, like good artists copy, great artists steal by Pablo Picasso. But that's what it is. And then, as I said, focus on testing concepts, um, different hooks and different angles. So this, for example, is one concept on the left side. It's just this mesmerizing video where you pour heavy cream into this bottle of coffee with ice, right? And it's just, it makes you want to drink it, right? It, or, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a food, food therapy uh, type of. The one on the right is a different winner that we've had for Life Boost in the past. This is um, an image, and it's very simple. It just tells you the story immediately. Your coffee, my coffee. On the left side, the guy has a, you know, stomach, his stomach uh, hurts or whatever. And then he has some stomach issues. The guy on the on the right is super happy, and he looks very you know happy about holding that that coffee in his hands. So that tells you the story. That hooks you, and that makes you read the ad copy. And then from there, the ad copy needs to be strong to make uh, the sell. And then of course the sales page and the offer. But any questions so far, Anna? Because it's been a while since I didn't oh, take a pause. Yeah. I, I made a mental note here. So you were telling us about increasing the spend and how you do that when you when you when you know a creative is going to be good, so you can increase the spend and make more money. What about bad days? How long do you wait? Um, let's say how long do you wait on a negative? day if that makes sense because you we do that a lot with native and youtube um we have a few great days but then let's say friday afternoon we are already on negative down five thousand dollars so we always it's always a hard decision like mm. do you leave the ads up or do we just write it out when you guys see bad, bad negative day do you wait 24 hours or do you just pause right away how do you go about that um just to clar clarify, are you talking about ads that are, you know, optimized or during the testing phase of creatives? Well, I, in general, optimize. Uh, we, we, you can answer both, but usually optimize. Like we'll have a good okay. campaign. It's profitable, but then uh -huh. we'll okay, get it. a terrible day. Yeah. So with Facebook, um, you don't want to make decisions too quick on intraday, um, you know, inter in intraday performance. For example, like today, we spend a hundred, uh, we spend a thousand dollars and there's no sales. Oh, let's pause all the ads. Like that's, that's bad. That's a bad decision. Uh, because what happens with Facebook, there's always like good and bad days. Sometimes you can go into like, uh, three bad days in a row, but I mean, you don't want to like reduce your spend from 10,000 to like 2000 because it then becomes really hard to, uh, recover again and scale back from 2000 to 10,000. So you can, um, you definitely don't want to make decisions on intraday performance. Um, if it's, uh, you, you got to give it like two, three days. Uh, it really depends of what daily budget we're talking about. But usually if uh, the less you spend on Facebook, the higher the volatility. Um, because, you know, if you're spending a thousand dollars a day and you're, your uh, CPA is 50 bucks, right? So that's how many conversions uh, a day, like 20. So that's $20,000 uh, a day. And then let's say you wake up and then you spend 500 bucks and then there's uh, no sales. And then you're like, oh, wow, I need to drop down spend immediately to $200. But if you waited, these five sales would come at, you know, towards the evening at night or they there, there will be, you know, much better performance tomorrow. So with Facebook, you always have to wait and give it a few days um, to see because it's very volatile pl platform. That is, I'm so glad you said that. And it's something I say all the time when it comes to native or YouTube, uh, you do have to wait a bit. 
And our job is to make sure we have really good offers. But, you know, for affiliates, we also want them to be uh, patient because yeah. bad days happen. And most of the time it evens out. But you need, we need to give the, the offer a chance, right? I've had so many affiliates try send a 300 click test and they're like, this offer doesn't convert with 300 clicks. I should have had at least a sale, right? Because yeah. there's a conversion rate based on those clicks, but you need to be looking at least at a, you know, a day or two customers will come in. So I'm so glad that you said that. That's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's how it is. Uh, wow. These are volatile uh, platforms. And then uh, another thing to, to add, what did I want to add? Yeah. A lot of people were very impatient. Um, so the recommendation we always give to clients, uh, we rarely have uh, clients that, you know, don't really understand it, but those who don't, we tell them like, don't look at it on daily basis. Uh, look at it at least over seven days or at the end of the month, because even if we have, uh, you know, bad week, we can, you know, just make some changes and adjustments to really come to your target at the end of the month. But if they start really messing with you and telling you like, oh, why spend? We have to drop spend. We have to do that. Like they, they can really break it. Um, so that's another advice. So, and then look, look at this here. So this is um, when you're testing. So for example, you run a bunch of um, concepts and you want to test them. You make sure on Facebook, you launch them at the same time. Each one has its own budget and ad set, one creative per ad set. And then you start the test. And then all of a sudden you see like one of them is just performing really, um, really good. I mean, completely crushing everything else in terms of, you know, ROAS and cost per purchase. And then they're all spending, um, you know, equal budget. But once you spend like 200 bucks and if your CPA is around like $30, then you don't need to wait too much into you know just creating too much wasteful spend. You want to shift spend from the ones that are underperforming to the perf to the one that is outperforming everything else. As you can see here in this test, uh, very small spend, like three thousand dollars spent, but we shifted more spend from the ones that are not performing to the top one because the top one is obviously the champion, and you spend a little bit more to validate it at scale and over a course of a week. So it spends like uh, 1200 bucks. And then you see the more it spends, then it gets more and more efficient. So now this is really a winner. That's, um, that's something you can take and you can validate it into a scale campaign uh, where you can start spending like five, $10,000. I mean, at least that's what we do, but if it really depends who is on what level in terms of daily spend. But this is something you can just put it into your scale campaign and really step on the gas, push more spend behind it. Um, if you're profitable with it, if, we, if you're uh, hitting your, your CPA or ROAS target there with this uh, creative, you can just put majority of the spend behind it. So, so that's in terms of how to test it, how quickly, what type of budget. Um, I think it's a, it's a good example. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I should have uh, scrolled through these to show you, but yeah, you can see it here. Um, and then once you find this winner, right? Like we have the side-by-side -side concept, your coffee, my coffee is a winner. Then we create a bunch of variations and we start testing them like a guy on the left, you know, a guy on the right, different, um, uh, different images, different headlines, because these variation tests increase or decrease the performance by small variant, but it's not going to hurt the whole performance. So the cycle is this concepts first, variations second, when you find a winner, then you start testing more ad copy, and then you repeat the whole cycle of the creative tests. It never ends. So what happens <clears throat> if uh, you stop um, you know running creative tests or refreshing your creatives on facebook is you go into this creative fatigue or audience fatigue you can see in red here it plateaus the performance this is the daily spend and then once you find another winner boom you can start scaling again and then it goes up and then it fatigues again but it fatigues on a different level now now you're you're gradually scaling the account and then another creative refresh or creative win 
and then you increase spend again. And then you have with yellow, which is the huge creative win. Now you discover something that's, you know, completely beats everything else. Big win. Now you scale double the whole spend. So if you can see from the beginning to, uh, to the end, this is a gradual scale, but it's pretty significant because it's, it's like uh, 20, 30K a day. All right. So these are more examples of the same situation happening over and over again. This is all creative driven. I wanted to show you one other thing, which is, I call it creative targeting, uh, another strategy. But after iOS 14, um, what, happens is, what happened is Facebook lost the ability to uh, target efficiently and uh, actually effectively. So the algorithm now needs to be trained in a different way than you know, with targeting tactics. So you have to do it through the creative. And what happens is now Facebook uh, forces you to buy a lot of, you know, low quality, you know, poop traffic, I call it, <laughs> just for the visualization here. But you, you have to spend money to show your ads to unqualified, you know, uh, v users on Facebook and you spend money behind it. So um, because your ability to target um, is not that great anymore. So what happens is you need to use and leverage the creative to really hit and only make um, people who are qualified click on the ads. So you pre-qualify uh, and you target through the ads. You make your targeting through the ads. So we, what we do is a persona-led uh, creative strategy to activate these uh, higher intent users on Facebook. So this is Cook's Venture, the brand I showed you earlier. They came with a challenge. They had high CPA, low ROAS, and they couldn't scale. And then we scaled them 2x by reducing their cost per acquisition in half. What we do is this. We go to uh, the existing ads on Facebook, and then we look into the comments. And then we compile and we analyze all these comments. So for instance, here, someone said, like Sharon says, this is the best tasting chicken I've had since I was a kid on my parents' farm in the 1950s okay whatever like who cares but if you're a marketer and you read that here's what you discover first of all she describes the product uh and the qual and the you know um how how it tastes right so it's the best tasting chicken second is without revealing her age she refers to being you know on her parents farm in the 1950s so you can put two and two together and she's you you can see what what how, how old is she right and then she refers to a whole other group of people who grew up on farms and then if you grew up on a farm and you ate these organic you know foods there and produce chicken whatever it was you know that tasted really good so this is just brilliant and then we take that and then we put it on top of this video, the unboxing video, as a headline, and it just completely crushes it because it speaks to the audience directly without you having to target people who are like 60 years old and live in a farm or stuff like that. It's just through the creative. Um, so yeah, so these buyer buying motivators, um, you can you can uh, you can find them. So the other thing is. Um, you have to really have no restrictions on what you test on Facebook and how weird you go. Don't really, if you're in the beginning, unless it's a scaled brand, I'll tell you a funny story about this specific footage here. So it's an unboxing video. Starts great, right? And then I'll show you something else. It goes into this guy barbecuing. Look, now he's, <laughs> this is so funny to explain, but he's poking the, the chicken thigh with that fork. What that created, we discovered that in another test is half of the people, when they see that, they're like, oh, why are you poking the chicken? The juices will drop. This is the wrong way to barbecue. You know, Americans are really big on barbecuing. Everybody's an expert. <laughs> and then the other half of it are like, no, it's nothing. It looks delicious. Uh, what's wrong with you? So that starts a discussion in the comments. And this is where I was telling you that the product needs to have an immediate result. Like you eat the chicken, you know it tastes really good, right? So that's it. And then people are seeing this ad and it becomes viral and it gets viral. And then people are like, no, I ordered the other day. It tastes great. 
what are you talking about? And then there is really like you don't have to remove negative comments and things like that because that's a discussion. That's what makes uh, Facebook powerful because once it becomes kind of like an organic post post where there's a discussion and people start uh, commenting in the comments, Facebook loves that because it keeps them on Facebook. It makes it look less like an ad. So when they click, more people convert. That means they had a good experience with the product. So advertiser make pro- makes money. The, the Facebook user is happy and Facebook is making money. So it's a three, triple win. But these things that people start, um, you know, bashing about how this guy is like barbecuing. And then most advertisers, oh, like we have to stop that. We don't want that negativity on, on our brand. But, um, but that's, that's the secret. You know, the secret sauce is you have to make people and show them something controversial to start a discussion. That gives you such a boost in efficiency that you can scale to the moon. So... I, I completely agree. I saw the other day on Wordable is um, a Facebook uh, a page that has a lot of subscribers. So the other day they pos- posted something and they said, what would uh, Americans want the Europeans to know? So obviously you had a lot of Americans telling, oh, Europeans should get deodorants. And then Europeans would reply and say, well, Americans cannot say. It was just the funniest thing. And, you know, the comments were all over the place. Some of them were rude. Some of them were just yeah. funny. But obviously that's what the brand was trying to achieve. They were trying mm-hmm. to open the conversation. And, you know, since the beginning of time, European and Americans always had something to bicker over even if you know at the end of the day we all love each other it's i completely agree and that's fantastic great so that's it i got it to a point where i showed you know the strategy and what's needed kind of like the foundation and how to get there Uh, i guess it will be a different call where i can uh, show you know how to actually scale it the campaign structure and everything else if there's interest so but that's what i have for today A hundred percent. And I would love for us to do that and have a a follow-up podcast where we dig even deeper into everything. And I really want to thank you for actually sharing a lot of the insights with us. Even, you know, uh, I learned so much by you going through the Facebook library and explaining how, you know, even if the images of the girls were the same, I, I, you had to verbalize it that they were all on a specific side of the page for me to realize that. And I, I'm not a creative person. I'm more of a, you know, business, financial, and so on. But you're right. That's so important. Small yeah. things like that, when we create ads, we forget just having the person on a specific side of the page, having, you know, the the yellow font, the yellow, you know, colors. Uh, that's brilliant. And I, I, I know if I found it helpful, a lot of our affiliates would. So thank you. Great. My pleasure. All right. So I don't, I know I, I like to keep this around one hour, but I, I made another mental question here for you. So yeah. I, we know that I think you said 75% or 80% of uh, uh, is the image, like the, the most important is the uh-huh. image when it comes to the ad, but then we have 25% for the copy. Question, because everyone is talking about this. Have you been using ChatGPT for your copy at all? And do you find it helpful or you just don't need it because you have a great copy team? We have, we have uh, used it. I think it's helpful. I definitely feel it's helpful if uh, you know how to give it uh, the right prompt. Uh, the more detailed you are, uh, you, I mean, it saves time. Um, but you can't really, if you put someone that's not knowledgeable, it doesn't know how to make it useful, they can't really um, do it. So like the copy that I showed you for, for Life Boost, um, you, you know, this this one has been tested. And the thing is with ChatGPT, this just produces a massive amount in, you know, milliseconds, right, of content that you can test. But then you have to, you need, you know, just a human behind it to strategize on how to actually spend real money behind that and validate it if it works or not. Because, you know, when you read it, it's great. Yeah, you know, I, I agree. But then... You start testing and then you realize, you know, sometimes, you know, it just doesn't doesn't perform. So I think 
it, there's a long way before, you know, we can use something like this uh, to, you know, just uh, completely outperform a human uh, or a copywriter because it really depends how it's used, right? So we use it, but not all the time. Yeah, so that's, the, that's the short we, answer. We use it as well, especially internally when we want to, you know, send a more bubbly email or <laughs> something like that. But you're right. Yeah. You have to add the, the right prompt. For, per for performance based specifically, uh -huh. it, it involves more human eye on it. Um, if it's more of like, you know, a blog post or something that really wouldn't hurt your pocket that much, uh, you would want to use something like ChatGPT. But um, if I'm going to be spending a $10,000 behind a copy test, um, I want to like make sure it's really based off historical performance and what I know uh, works. There's other elements there because ChatGPT is based on like what's the, there's no attribution there, right? Like it just comes up with stuff that they're not, there's no attribution back to where they come from. So. <laughs> All right. And uh, one more thing, I promise. I keep saying this, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, just one more thing. Let's pretend some of our uh, viewers or listeners are going to skip to the end of the podcast and you have, you know, a minute to not summarize, but give them one piece of information that you feel is very, very valuable and you really want them to take the that information and keep keep it in their mind and heart forever uh, something it could be about facebook ads or just you know something personal like you want everyone to just be kinder when they work with each other or anything yeah i think for um uh, to summarize if one thing needs to be remembered from this presentation is like test everything and anything and don't really assume um you know, don't be afraid to break something when you're testing on Facebook or any other platform. Test as fast as you can uh, so you can, you know, just uh, get to what's performing uh, best, uh, you know, faster. And uh, that advice alone, I think, will be uh, moving you forward and upward uh, much faster because a lot of people were assuming um, and then they don't do things because of their it's based off assumptions or their personal taste or preference. Like, I don't like the green color. Why are we using the green color in, in these ads? Well, that's what performs. Like, is it your personal taste or you want performance? Like, you have to choose. So um, test it. If you can make it while it's ugly and unpolished, you imagine what you can do when you polish it up. So uh, also, don't really try to make it perfect and move fast with testing. So that's that's the advice. That's beautiful advice. I love it. We obviously agree. Uh, you're fantastic. Uh, we will have you again, please. You have to say yes. I say. We have so much. I'm going to say yes. Yes, it will be my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to share your email, if that's okay, in the comment section as well. I know we yeah. had it at the end of the presentation, but we'll copy paste it for you guys in the comment section. And again, guys, thank you for listening. If you are listening to us on Spotify or Google, please make sure you watch this on YouTube or Facebook later because the presentation is fantastic. I took a bunch of screenshots. It's so valuable. So Manol, thank you again so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. I will see you soon at one of the events. I will, for sure. We will. Guys, thank you so much for listening.